Hi, this is Michelle Sam from Sammy Wong's Kitchen. Many of you have asked me, how do I age prime rib? So I decided to video this and maybe you can follow along with me or do it next year. Now I've been aging prime rib for, I don't know how long, um, and I just love it. There's even been one time where I took my aged prime rib, I bought some dry ice, and I packed it in my hand luggage um, and took it to New York with me. My sister-in-law warns everybody who travels with me that they always need to be in front of me when I go through security because nine times out of 10, I am stopped because of some kind of food item that I'm carrying. Um, but that's what foodies do. Anyway, H prime rib. There is nothing like aged prime rib. And I'm doing this video right now because it is on sale. And by the time we age it, most aged prime ribs cost about $40 per pound and up. So you are taking a pretty good piece of meat and you're making it out of this world. So a few things you should know for the actual meat. You should buy choice meat. You don't have to buy prime because you're going to be aging it. And I actually haven't tried it with the select grade. It probably is just going to be as good uh, because of the aging process. But when you age prime rib, as I say in my blogs, that you really need to get to know your butcher. So yesterday I went to Albertsons. It was on sale. I spoke to my butcher, Mike, and I asked him, can I get the presidential cut? So what is the presidential cut? Presidential cut is basically where they separate the ribs from the actual roast and then tie it back together. If you can see here, they have removed the rib from the, from the rest of the roast and then they have tied it back together. But when you know your butcher by name, they can do all sorts of things for you. So yesterday I asked Mike if between the ribs and the roast, if you could actually put a layer of herb spice. So if you can see that here, between the rib and the roast, there are some rosemary and other kinds of herbs that are there. And that's actually free at Albertsons. So um, if you have a reputable butchery that does that kind of service for you, take advantage of it. How much meat to buy? Because we are buying the prime rib with the actual rib, you can estimate about a pound a person prime rib will shrink about 20% from the time you purchase it to the time you're actually roasting it. And that is not complete shrinkage, but it have to be cutting a lot of the dry parts away before you actually roast it. So a few things you'll need for aging your prime rib, besides your prime rib, of course, uh, some baking soda, and this is a deodorizer for your refrigerator and some whiskey or alcohol to clean your meat initially. Some paper towels that we'll use to dry up our meat initially and cheesecloth. And depending on how bloody your meat is, you might need one or two packs. So let's get started. A few things you should know about aging prime rib. One is you need a designated space in your refrigerator. And I always buy my rib roast on sale in November around Thanksgiving. And I age it for about a month for Christmas. And so that's a lot of space to be consumed by a piece of roast in your refrigerator. I luckily have a, another refrigerator. And also be mindful of the fact that a lot of the um, refrigerator aromas, odors, uh, will 
penetrate into the meat of your prime rib. So be careful of that. So, you know, you can have stuff in the refrigerator, but make sure you're not exposing it so that the, the smells are in the refrigerator. While this prime rib is aging, it is going to also emit its own aroma. And that's why I always put some baking soda in next to um, the meat. In addition to that, when you are aging, you want to make sure that there is air circulation around your prime rib. So I will put that on a tray. So this is like a pretty high roasting tray. And then I put a wire rack on top. And then I will set my roast down uh, that side up and there will be enough air circulation around the actual roast. Now I'm going to be showing you how I clean and prep my prime rib for aging. Okay, so here's the anatomy of a prime rib. Around the edge, you have what's called the fat cap. Um, and here is the cap. And this part between this fat and the cap is called the eye. Now, Ideally, you want a prime rib roast where you'll have a big fat layer around the top. I would have preferred a little more fat, but when I asked my butcher, um, this is how it came right out of the cryovac pack. So it was fairly lean. I'm gonna have to go with this. Over the years, I've asked them to actually cover the entire roast with herbs, but I found that that is really not beneficial because basically you're gonna be cutting off the whole outer parts before roasting. So uh, it doesn't really do too much for the roast. Okay, so to prepare the roast, what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna run this out under the sink because that will just ruin all the herb spice that is between the ribs and I really don't want any water sitting in between the rib and the roast. What I'm gonna do is dry it out with some paper towels, making sure that it's all clean. So what does it mean to age meat? Aging meat is a way of tenderizing the meat either in a wet or dry environment. Wet aging occurs when meat is placed in a wet environment in a vacuum sealed bag. For dry aging, it is placed in a dry environment. When meat is dry aged, two things happen. The enzymes in the meat break down the muscle fibers, thus tenderizing the meat. Not only does it tenderize the meat, but the moisture in the meat evaporates, which makes the flavor of the meat more intense, giving you a more flavorful and tender roast. So now that I've wiped it down with paper towels, I'm gonna take some paper towels, dip it into some alcohol, and in this case, it's my whiskey, and I'm going to dab it so I'm gonna clean the roast with the whiskey. Then I'll just blot it again. Make sure that it's dry. this bloody parts here like getting some alcohol cleaning those parts up here and let me show you here let me split this around so 
parts like this just go ahead and clean it make sure that everything is just nice and clean we are going to be using cheesecloth to wrap around the roast it is absorbent so it'll initially absorb all the excess moisture from the meat but it is also sheer so that moisture can easily evaporate from the roast what we don't want is any kind of moisture to build up on the meat, which will result in bad bacteria growth. So for the cheesecloth, I use a double layer rather than single layer, since it's so sheer. And sometimes you might need to replace your cheesecloth after a few days if it gets really wet and doesn't look like it's absorbing any of the moisture because what you don't want is moisture on your roast. So this is cheesecloth and kind of pretty much wrap it like this. some blood here. Just wipe this down. And some alcohol first. Clean this part up. Don't want that. And then I will cut another piece. So it's pretty much all encased in a cheesecloth and it is pretty dry. So I'm going to just take this and I'm going to be placing it on a rack, which is a deep tray. And on top of the tray is a wire rack. And I am going to put it with the bone side down because the bone provides air space underneath here. And you'll see that around the entire roast, there is air circulation. So here is my meat that is surrounded with cheesecloth. And now I'm going to show you how I place it into the refrigerator with some water and the baking soda. Okay, so in this refrigerator, I have placed my prime rib on the wire rack that is on a tray. So you'll have air circulation going through. And here is my bowl of water. And I'm going to also put my baking soda there. And I will check on this tomorrow and show you what the meat looks like. So this is day two of the aging of the prime rib. And you'll notice that um, the cheesecloth has turned red here, but when I touch it, it's not soggy or wet. And it's actually quite dry. So because everything is dry, I am not going to change the cheesecloth, but just allow this to continue aging in the refrigerator. Okay, so this is day three of the aging of our prime rib. And I am going to remove and replace the cheesecloth with a new layer of cheesecloth. Now, just in case you uh, don't know, the cheesecloth is a very thin, sheer cotton uh, fabric. So this is actually two layers and, and it, it comes folded in four layers. And what I'm going to be doing is 
separating it so we just have two layers and using two layers to cover the prime rib. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of measure out my cheesecloth. So about this much, I'm going to cut it here. And with very clean and dry hands, I'm going to take off the old cheesecloth and replace it with the new one. So from day two, you saw that it's dry, but a lot of the blood has been absorbed into the cheesecloth. So I'm going to remove this piece of cheesecloth and replace it with a new piece. And the meat here, it's still fairly soft, but it's not wet. And the fat is very dry. Okay. I'm just going to remove it like this. And then remove that piece. And the reason why we use cheesecloth as opposed to any other fabric is that then we won't have any lint fibers or fabric fibers being left onto the meat. But you definitely want to be very clean about this so your hands need to be washed um, and we don't want any kind of excess bacteria forming on the meat. So this is what it looks like on day three. I'm gonna separate this piece so that I have a two layer cheesecloth. So this is actually two layers and then I'm going to redress this and we'll not have to redress this again because um, I, there's not going to be any moisture absorption from here on out. Just want to make sure that everything is covered with the cheesecloth. And if you have excess cheesecloth, Try to layer it where there is the meat part rather than the fat. So in case you have any more liquid, it can be absorbed there, but also um, it is limiting the amount of moisture evaporation from the roast. Okay. So there you have your redressed prime rib. Okay, this is day seven of our aged prime rib and I'm just filming it right in the refrigerator. You see that the fat is pretty hard and, and when I feel the flesh it's pretty dry. It's day 14 and it definitely feels harder and I'm not sure if it's 
discolored more, but this is what it looks like. Twenty eight days, very dry and very hard. Doesn't even push in. So it's the big day. And here we have our 30 day aged prime rib. That's what it looks like. It's really hard. And I am going to um, be dressing it with olive oil and some herbs and some dry rub. And then I am first going to cut off all the hard parts of the meat here. So let's get to that. Okay, so I'm going to remove this, get this on the cutting board, and basically I'm going to cut all the hard part away. I'm actually going to save the, the hard meat because that is going to make excellent stock. You have to be careful that sometimes some mold does appear. Um, and then we don't want to eat that, so you'll just need to discard those pieces. But everything else is pretty good. So we don't have any mold here because we took care of it pretty well with um, the alcohol. So I'm going to just cut this using a very sharp chef's knife. I'm going to cut, cut all the, the dry pieces. This is where the really soft meat is. So I'm going to cut all the way till I get that. And here on the top is the fat. I'm going to just score it so that the fat can come out while roasting. But I don't want to get all the way to the meat. And I definitely do not want to cut um, the strings. So just between the strings, score it well. My roast beef is pretty much all soft. These are soft parts. So, and it's fairly firm because, you know, it's all aged. Now it's time to baste our roast with olive oil and herbs and seasonings, which will form the dry rub. Now that I've liberally brushed olive oil all over my prime rib, I'm going to take a combination of dried herbs and a dry rib, and I'm just going to be spreading it all over my meat. Okay. And then I'm going to be putting it onto a rack and allow it to rest for an hour so that the so. dry rub can penetrate into the meat and the meat can come to room temperature. So now I'm gonna take my baking sheet. I'm gonna place some foil on so cleanup is easier. Place my prepared prime rib onto the rack and then this will go into a 225 degree oven. I'm going to take it out of the oven at 115, increase the temperature of the oven so that I can sear it and then sear the prime rib for the last few minutes until the temperature reaches um, what we like and that's usually at about 125, 30 for medium rare. Um, but I am going to put an internal thermometer in just to check the temperature. Since I have two, I'm going to place one there and one here. Because I definitely know my family does not like overcooked meat. Allow your roast beef to rest for about 10 minutes. This allows the juices to reabsorb and redistribute within the meat. It also increases your internal temperature about five degrees. So take this into consideration when cooking your meat. I hope this has helped. 
If so, please like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks. More recipes can be found on SammyWongsKitchen.com or social media. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks.